drive me crazy. Cardi a good catch, but you gotta chase me. Grab my waist sound, but don't ever waste me. Turn on please me, but don't ever play me. One of a kind, you can't replace me. Time to shine, I buzz down the AP. The stakes is higher. Let's do what we both desire. On God, like I'm in the choir. I bet you if you make me sweat, I still be on fire. You wanna touch, wanna touch it, cause you wanna, you wanna run with my love, I know you wanna, from the club to the tub, you said you wanna, give me an on I hug, I bet you wanna, I bet you wanna, I bet you wanna, I bet you, I bet you, I bet you wanna, I bet you wanna, I bet you wanna, something about me's taking you high.
So good evening, everyone. It's 6 p.m. So let me welcome you all to our third session. Um, I hope that you are doing fine, given that medyo maulan uh, mga ating panahon. So ayan. Um, this is our th third session of the month. 
So for those who haven't been acquainted with Esquilabs yet, um, allow me to introduce to you um, as, um, who we are. So we are Esquilabs. Um, we are an education technology startup company um, founded in Singapore last year. So we've been operating in the Philippines for around a year now. And we have trained around 100 uh, data scientists um, for our year of operations. So our goal um, as, a, as a company is to inspire, equip, and connect young people to opportunities in the future of work through data science skills. So we have different programs across um, different topics, um, data science, um, analytics, and then business intelligence. So we have different kinds of programs for these kinds of uh, fields. Okay. So what is Aral Aral? So Aral Aral is Esquilab's online self-paced course for aspiring data scientists. So anyone can join, um, um, anyone can join uh, and receive, anyone can join the course and receive free and uh, free community support and participate in fun quizzes and check-ins and Q&A. So if you want to have more information about the program, you can check on uh, the link uh, bit.ly slash learner uh, FAQs. So how do you access the platform? Uh, you can sign up on the link bit.ly slash sqlabs um, rrlds sign up and then you can check in your email to join the platform. Then once you are in the platform, you can check on um, the contents provided there and then you can start your journey as a data scientist and you also join, want to join to the uh, our Facebook group. Um, there we will be updating on um, the schedules of the learning circles and then you can sign up individually on the uh, on each session. Okay, so the learning circles, as I said, is a dedicated tutorial session for the community members um, who wants to learn more about data science. So we are inviting everyone who wants to learn um, data science for the month of October for free guided sessions. So this is our third session of the month. So um, I hope that everyone has installed um, Anaconda na since yeah, this is our third. And um, for those who haven't, allow me to kind of introduce how to install Anaconda for you. So for, you go to Anaconda website um, and then um, you follow the instructions given the given at the installation and then make sure to download Jupyter Notebook. So we'll be using uh, Jupyter Notebook to um, code in P Python. So Anaconda is a free and open source um, distribution of Python and R uh, programming language. So here's the MacBook version if you are using uh, a Mac. And then if you have not yet uh, downloaded Anaconda or Jupyter, um, an alternative to that is Google Colab. So it has the same functionalities as Jupyter Note. So the, you can access it at colab.research.google.com. So um, guys, if so for today, uh, we will be using the materials provided in the link. So you can access the notebook for the third session at bit.ly slash October LC student file. So this is the same as before. Okay. So today's session will be EDA and data wrangling with NumPy and Panda. So this is an important process in, the, in data science since um, EDA is where how we analyze uh, data and data wrangling is how we organize it. And then um, NumPy and Pandas are two of the important uh, Python libraries that we will be using in like our whole uh, journey as a data scientist. So for those who have uh, not yet been acquainted with Jeff, uh, Jeff is our mentor for um, the learning circles in October. And he is an applied mathematical finance major at um, Ateneo de Manila. He is uh, a data science fellow. He was a data science fellow at uh, Esquilabs where um, he graduated from the fourth cohort of the fellowship. So he is actually the youngest in the cohort. He is uh, also the DSC lead at Google DSC Loyola, the developer student club chapter at Ateneo de Manila. He is a passionate learner where he tries to explore the applications and intersections of different fields like data science, economics, finance, and mathematics. So he believes that all of our institutions must make more and better data-driven decisions. So we can start on with Jeff na for EDA and data wrangling with NumPy and Pandas. So take it away, Jeff. Hi, everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, okay, wait a second. Here. 
Do you see my screen? Okay, great. So uh, again, welcome to our session today. Uh, I'm Jethro Sia, and this is uh, our third session for the October Learning Circles. And today we'll discuss EDA with NumPy and Pandas. So what is EDA? EDA is Exploratory Data Analysis. So it's uh, the first step of data science, to be honest. Aside from the collection part or the engineering part, EDA is analyzing data at the surface level uh, without going to like the hard, hard part first. So again, let's open Jupyter. Uh, and I think for this session, we included two CSV files. So please uh, place those CSV files in the same folder as your Jupyter notebook. Because uh, you won't be able to access it if it's in a different uh, folder. So again, basic stats and exploratory data analysis. So what we'll learn today, uh, first, uh, Python modules, what, what they are, what they do, uh, how they help us, uh, and uh, second one, NumPy, then third one, Pandas. So let's start with uh, Python modules and packages. So um, a module is a file containing set of a set of functions you want to include in your application. Later, I'll, uh, I'll uh, teach how we can import modules into your uh, Python environment so you can use these functions. These are the functions that are not built in, uh, in Python. So what are the different examples of uh, packages you can use? So, so for uh, the ones uh, highlighted in green are the ones uh, that are very relevant for data science. So we have data analysis, which is NumPy and Pandas that we'll discuss today. Then we have data visualization. Uh, we'll discuss uh, next week for the, for the last session. So Matlab and Bokeh. Then now uh, we have web scraping. So web scraping is basically uh, getting data from websites online. So we can also do that with Python with, uh, with these um, packages or modules. Then we, we can also do web development with Python. So uh, with Django and TAS. Then fifth, we can also do graphical user interfa interface. So we can uh, design the front end part of websites and mobile apps using Python. That's how wide the applications of uh, Python are. So then we have more. We have uh, for machine learning. You can also definitely use Python for machine learning with TensorFlow and Scikit-Learn, and actually more packages. These are just the most famous ones. Then we can also do natural language processing. So natural language processing is basically analyzing a text. So for example, if you want to analyze uh, a speech of a certain person, for example, the speech of Duterte, uh, like what's uh, the, the most common words, you can use Python to analyze that. And you can analyze, to be honest, any text that there, are, there is. Then you also have image and video processing. Uh, if you see uh, the, the cameras, uh, the detection cameras in our airports that detect if someone's wearing a mask or someone's not wearing a mask, uh, they can be done with Python. And we can also do game development with Python. Uh, most people are used to just doing games with Android and Unity, but we can also do one in Python. And lastly, the very new field, quantum computing. We can also do this in Python. So there are a lot of applications and packages are here to help us. So before moving there, uh, let's move to our notebook. Okay, do you see my notebook now? Okay. Uh, am I sharing correctly? Great. So to import a module, we use the import function. So import, then uh, the name of the package that you want to import. So for this case, we if we want to import, uh, we want to import NumPy. Then uh, we can use the functions inside the NumPy package or the NumPy module. So for example, for this, we want to get the average of the list here. We use the mean function inside the NumPy uh, package. So import that. Then uh, we can also have 
uh, make it shorter. Instead of typing numpy.mean for the whole thing, we can type np.mean just like this one. So uh, import numpy as np. You can you can use other words like n or p, but uh, most of the time people just people use np because it's um, the most distinguished one. Then np.mean. Then we can also just import uh, specific functions. For example, from numpy import mean, uh, the mean. But the the negative thing here is that you can't use the other functions inside numpy since you only imported mean. So that's uh, that's basically how you import uh, modules in Python. Now let's move to our next part. Our first module, NumPy. So what is NumPy? NumPy uh, stands for Numerical Python. It's the fundamental package for scientific computing with Python. Uh, moving back to our... If you have questions, just again, message the Zoom call. I'll, I'll zoom in this one. I think it's pretty small. It's not zooming in. Okay, there. So in, again, import NumPy as NP. Then here, let's do basic statistics with NumPy. Since again, it's a it's a fundamental package for scientific computing. It's made for these stuff, for statistics. So we have a list here of, uh, let's check how long, uh, how many items there are, of 30 numbers. Uh, from 1 to, I think, 25 is the max here. So 1 to 25. And uh, we can use the functions in NumPy to make our lives easier. And like, uh, like we discussed for the last two sessions. Are there questions? Okay. Uh, unlike for the last two sessions, uh, we didn't really use packages. So we did everything manually. Um, if we want to solve for something, we're going to code it using the basic operations. So for this case, uh, we use numpy.mean to get the mean or the average of a data set. Then we can also use np.median to get the middle value of a data set ordered from least to greatest. So for this case, uh, they're both equal. But then I want to ask you guys, are the mean and median always the same? Type uh, yes or no in the... Okay, this is a question. Uh, no, okay. Nice. Uh, okay, they're not always the same. Uh, there are... I think if you already took a statistics class, in the normal distribution, there are like uh, there are some curves that are positively skewed, and there are some curves that are negatively skewed. And for those cases, the mean and median are not the same. So again, the answer is no. Now let's move to the next one: uh, variation or dispersion. So we have two parts here: the variance and the standard deviation. So uh, the variance measures the average degree to which each point differs from the mean, the average of all data points. Uh, so you have a lot of data points. For this case, your mean is 12. So it takes the average of, say, the difference. So for this case, the uh, difference between the mean, the sum is 10, uh, 9, and so on. And it takes the average of that. So that's basically our variance. And standard deviation looks at how spread out a group of numbers is from the mean by just taking the square root of the variance. Uh, so standard deviation is very important, especially for like uh, the especially the normal curve, the bell curve. Because uh, for one standard deviation, it covers 68.2 or 68.3% of your data set. And two, it goes on uh, until it covers uh, almost all of the data. So let's try. Uh, we can use np.std to get the standard deviation of the data and np.var to get the variance. So uh, let's try to analyze this. What do these values mean for us? So let's assign now, uh, let's make two variables, average and stdev. Uh, 
basically for the first part, it's, it just says around 68.2%. This area here, this area here, uh, is between 4.47 and 19.5. So I think if you do it manually, it will be it will definitely be around that number. Then uh, again, I want to ask you guys, what do we need to change in the formula to make it uh, to check? Uh, the range for 95.4%. So basically, it's two standard deviation. Do we add? Okay. Anyway, uh, we basically just uh, multiply the standard deviation by two. And we'll see that uh, around 95.4% of the data is between negative three and 27 uh, and 27. So that's from this list. So again, this is just basically the application of how we can use NumPy to make our uh, uh, lives in statistics easier. Uh, instead of analyzing them manually, like we did, uh, like what we did last week, the best way to go is to import modules uh, to help you uh, perform your tasks more easily. Now that we're done with NumPy, let's move on to like the most the most important part of this lesson, uh, which is pandas. Uh, going back to my there, so uh, pandas. So I'm so sorry. Here. So pandas is uh, basically uh, short for Python Data Analysis Library. Uh, it's a Python package built on top of NumPy, uh, and it's very useful for special array handling, data manipulation, plotting, and web scraping. So well, pandas is particularly strong in the area of handling spreadsheet structures, dealing with missing data, and processing time series data. So for this case, well, we'll be handling CSV files. So uh, for those who have already used, I assume everyone has used Microsoft Excel, uh, Google Sheets, and uh, and maybe some of you have already also tried SQL. They are in a form of a table. And Pandas will uh, work with uh, tables like this. So let's import pandas now, this time as pd. So series, what is a, uh, a series is a one-dimensional array-like object. So one dimension, isa lang, isang column lang. Then each element has an associated data level called its index. By default, the index consists of, an, of ordinary array indices. Uh, an example, consecutive, consecutive integers starting from zero. So just like this, as we, like what we discussed last week. Uh, the index of a string or a list starts with zero. So let's uh, try to convert this list into a series. So it will just uh, look like this. Then we can add a name to the series. So basically the name of the series already is now uh, name. And you can again convert it back to a list. Then get the index, then get the values So series one. I'm so sorry. Series one. Okay. So that's the basic concept of series. So this is going to be involved when we move forward to the data frame. So a data frame represents a tabular spreadsheet-like data structure containing an ordered collection of columns. So if the series is one-dimensional or just if, if just as one column, the data frame has many columns. And each column can be a different type, integers, strings, floating point numbers, Python objects, and etc. So no limit with the type. Again, just like uh, lists, which is better, link, better in handling missing data. Uh, I would say Python is very easy. When handling missing data, sadly, well, we're not gonna work with missing data today. Uh, but using NumPy and Pandas, it's going to be very easy to handle missing data. 
made it missing data. So we have here a dictionary. A dictionary that has a key of a word, then a value of a list. And we can convert this into a data frame. And let's, uh, let's try to run this. Uh, this is the output. And it, it looks very nice. Like Unlike this, the series, which is just a bunch of numbers, characters, for data frame, it has, it has, this, it has that sort of table where you can clearly see the values in each part. So we can also do lists inside lists. Uh, okay. Data frame. So there. Then another part. Uh, so that's basically how we convert diction or convert to uh, data frame. Now let's read the CSV file. Uh, before we start, can everyone uh, click yes in the participants part if you have already downloaded and place zoo.csv in the same folder. So how about the others? Okay, nice. Click uh, again for the other side if you still haven't click no and if you have other questions. Uh, just place in the same folder as your Python notebook. No, still no. Uh, doesn't matter what data type this or dictionary when we use when making a data frame. No, it's just a matter of convenience. I personally prefer the dictionary because you immediately see like the key, which is the column name to this part, and the data inside. Not yet ready. Okay, wait. Wait. Uh, Gerald, pwede pa sendor Hello, hello. Okay, there. I'm so sorry. Okay, there. And make sure to place it in the same folder. So if your uh, Python notebook, the notebook we're discussing right now, is in your desktop, and just so I just place it in your desktop. And if you place it in a different folder, just place it in a folder. Okay. Uh, Stay yes. I, I think I'll start if we reach around 10 to 20 yeses or 15. So I am i don't want to leave people behind. Are the others ready? Yes, okay. If I can see the file in Jupyter Notebook, does that mean it's okay? Uh, to verify if it works, just run this first cell. I, okay, I'm sharing my uh, Jupyter Notebook. So just run this first cell, and, and if it outputs a table, it works. It's already okay. No more problems. I think I can start at 6.25. If no one comments no anymore. Sorry, what? I Sorry, which first cell? First cell. Uh, the the module part. Yun po ba? Ah, okay. 
So this is a special case. If you still don't have a uh, NumPy, what you can do is type pip install NumPy. Uh, then you can run this. Uh, for my case, I won't run this anymore because I already have NumPy. But for the others, you can try to install this. I think it should output something. Okay, wait. Uh, I'll get back to you, sir. Then uh, I'll just discuss it. Okay, it's okay now. Okay, so reading a CSV to a data frame. Again, the, the best use of Pandas is to you know, edit edit our uh, tables, edit our data. Because uh, most of our data are represented in CSVs. So CSV comma separated values. If we try to open uh, a CSV file in Excel, it will definitely still look like uh, a table. But if you try to open it in Notepad, uh, it will look like a text with commas. I'll try to show that now. Uh, data science. So, do you see my screen? Okay, great. Let's try to open the zoo, uh, zoo.csv in notebook. Open with notepad, I mean notepad. And you'll see, uh, it's not really a table. Unlike here in uh, Python, it's just values with commas. So that's basically how uh, Python or I mean, how we store our, our data in the basic, in the most basic sense. Uh, they would be extracted and be placed in comma separated values. Now let's uh, continue with pandas. So again, read this uh, using the uh, function pd.readcsv. And uh, it will place it into the data frame and it's already in the type of a data frame. So we have uh, the most basic functions that uh, everyone does to check uh, if their data is okay. So uh, len df. So this is basically saying you have 22 rows of data in your data, data frame. df.head checks the first five rows. Now df.tail, on the other hand, checks the last five rows. Then you can also have df.info, shows the number of non-empty entries. So non-null. So as you can see here, uh, the animal and ID column is complete, but for the meat need and water need, uh, may kulang. So for water need, may kulang na lima. So meat need, so daming kulang. And uh, if you're gonna handle missing data, this is going to be a very useful because you most of the time you need to avoid those missing data you can impute or you can remove them completely but for our case we'll just leave them on hand then we can also use the f.columns to check the columns in the data set so here we have four columns the animal id water need and need and lastly check the shape so the rows number of rows and number of columns so 22 rows and four columns so let's move to the next part, slicing a data frame by column. Again, this is our data frame, uh, zoo.csv. Then uh, DF animal just takes the animal column and it, it yields a pandas uh, series. So the, the basic idea is that if we combine two or more series, it results to a data frame. Because again, series are just one dimensional. There are no there are no two dimensional series, so that's a basic idea of the series, the relationship between series and data frame. Uh, is space treated as none? Uh, in the note in in the in if you open it in Excel or if you open it in Notepad, in Notepad it, it's a uh, yeah there, there's nothing in between. But if there's a space, it's not counted as none. So none is basically an empty nothing not not necessarily uh an empty space but it's nothing like no characters at all 
So here, so if we want to check the animal column in a data frame form, we can have double brackets. So it's more appealing to the eye, uh, unlike the series. I really hate the series type. Then I can retrieve by attribute this again the results into a series in case of need, in case for analysis. Uh, then you can also get two columns, or two columns or more, to be honest. There, if you need that. Then <coughs> uh, let's combine, let's use NumPy for uh, what we call it, for, for pandas, for data frames. So we can get the uh, a single column, the water need column, and take the sum. So you're basically getting here the total water need of the animals in the zoo. So 6,090, let's say, liters of water or something. Then you can also have, um, you can also do this. This is basically the same thing, that sum at the end. And uh, the, differ the only difference is that for the first one, you need to import NumPy. For the second one, you don't need NumPy. Uh, then let's move to sorting and filtering data frames. Uh, you can do DF sort values. And you'll see for what they need, it's in ascending order. So from least to greatest. That's the standard uh, output of our of the sort values. So to make it descending, we add a next part. So ascending equals false. So it's now descending from greatest to least. And to the no values. Then again, going back, it didn't update uh, our data frame because to update that, you need to, again, an add another part here. So again, just like for lists, we need to, if, we, we're gonna, if we're gonna make edits, we need to assign it again to the same variable. That's a basic idea. Then now we can filter. So for this case, we want to check the rows that have water need greater than or equal to 200. So it, it, out, it outputs a uh, boolean, so true and false. If, but if we want to really show which rows, oh, we do this. We place a bracket, then we place this inside. Again, this, uh, the thing inside outputs a boolean for each row. Then for this part, a, it shows that row if it's true, then it uh, doesn't show it if it's false. Uh, and you'll see that uh, animals with water need less than 200 are not shown anymore. Then we can also do two filters. So the first one is DF water need greater than 200, and the next one is DF water need less than 500. So it will only show data that ha uh, the animals that has uh, water need between 200 to 500, excluding 200 and 500. So there. And we can combine uh, the sorting and the slicing part. So sort. So your uh, conditions are here. Your filter conditions are here. Then to not uh if you cannot if you notice it this part the highlighted part outputs another data frame a filtered data frame and from that filtered data frame you can slice a column for analysis so this is the water need of those animals that have water need between 200 and 500 and these are their uh, indexes then you can also count the number of animals. So for this case, the F animal equals equals tiger. So you just get the tigers in the animal column and count how many tigers are there in the zoo. So from this analysis, we know that there are five tigers. Then another part, uh, we can uh, assign those filtered uh, data frames into variables, then uh, convert those variables or data frames into CSVs. So let's try to run this. 
And if you check your folder, I'll share my uh, whole screen again and go back to that part. Daily the science. Now, there's now a new CSV file. So did everyone get that CSV file? Again, uh, click yes if you got that new CSV file. Or if you have questions, again, uh, you may answer, uh, you may ask before we move to the next part of our thing. Did everyone get that, that new CSV file, the zebra.csv? Okay, for, for checks, for yeses. How about the others? Do you have questions? Oh, munti yung yes. Ito munti yung yes. What is the zebra file again? Uh, if you run this cell, it will, the, the first line, uh, the, the first part muna, uh, it filters out uh, only the rows. It leaves out all the other animals and just leaves in the rows that are for the zebras in your uh, data frame. Then you, assi you assign that filtered data frame into your zebra variable. Then you convert the uh, the data frame inside your zebra variable into a CSV file. Then if you check it, you'll find a new file in you in the folder that has your Jupyter notebook. So let's try to okay, nice. How about the others? Uh, let's try to let's try to open this in Excel. There's, I hope you see my screen. Okay, you see my screen. So there now you have a filtered data set. So that's a basic idea of it. Okay, I hope everyone got that. So, no questions? Okay, so we have a short uh, exercise again. Uh, identify how much in PHP will be spent to feed the lions. Assume each unit of meat costs 30 pesos. So, you can do filtering, uh, just a tip. You can you can uh, filter out the lions, then just get the column for the meat need, then multiply that by 30. It's a basic idea. I mean, I'll get the sum and multiply by 30. So again, I can give you four minutes. I think three minutes would be enough, to be honest. So until 6.42 for this one. And you can uh, PM me, private message it privately to our chat. Again, if you have questions, just ask me so I can help you answer them. All right. I might have went too fast for this one.
Okay, it's 642. Now let's try to answer this one. So again, first step, filter uh, lions pala yung lions. Yeah, lion. Filter lions first. So animals. Animal, I mean. Then lion. Lion niya ako So filter out the lion first. Then splice or just get the column for meat meat. Tama ba? So meat meat. meat. Yeah, meet mid. Then get the sum of the meet mid. Then times 30. Okay, someone got it correctly. So, okay, there's a number of people who got it correctly. So the part where you filter uh, filter the animals to just lion is very important because the question asked is how much money will be spent to feed the lions? Uh, and there. Okay, great. Again, if you have just if you have questions, just message the group. Now let's uh, let's go back to our PowerPoint data frame. So let's apply our knowledge. We'll explore a Titanic data set. So the Titanic data set is a real data set uh, of the passengers in the Titanic. So it includes, uh, we'll check the columns later. But basically, for those who don't know Titanic yet, <coughs> uh, Titanic is a ship that sank around, I think, the 1914, uh, around, that, around that years. And... It became very popular because of the movie that was released around in the 1900s, uh, 1990s or 2000s, Sina Jack and Rose, their love story. Uh, so we're going to explore that data set now. I hope you're all interested. So again, uh, let's import again the um, modules that we're going to use, Pandas and NumPy. And now let's read CSV the Titanic the CSV. Again, you must have this placed in the same uh, folder as the last uh, as a zoo CSV. So you have this. So we have 891 rows and eight columns. So basically, uh, 891 passengers uh, in the Titanic when it sank that time. Now let's use our first info, so df2.info, to check. So all the uh, all most of the columns are complete except for the age. No problem. Then uh, let's do some questions from uh, this data set. So first, let's get the average age of the uh, passengers in the ship. So df2 age that mean so. The answer here is the, the average age in the ship is 29.69. Then, who oh, to? Okay, the F2 age. That, uh, STG. STG, right? There, 14. So again, going back to our analysis a while ago, 68.2% of the passengers uh, have an have a age of uh, around 15 to 33 years old, or 15 to 33 years old. Now, uh, another question, how many men and women are there in the Titanic when it sank? So the only difference is here is the filter condition. So for the first one, gender equals M, so gender equals male. So you can see here. Then gender equals F, if it's female. Let count. So there are 577 men in the ship when it sank, and 314 women uh, also when it sank. Uh, then now let's check uh, what percent of the passengers survived uh, when it uh, when the Titanic sank. So only 
more percent survive uh, the sinking of the Titanic, which is very sad. Sobrang unti. Then, another here, uh, how many women over age 50 embarked in Cherbourg? Uh, so, again, we, since we must have uh, two filters, we can use the end uh, feature. So, the first, uh, the first, again, uh, filter, uh, age is greater than 50 because, again, over age 50. Then, the next part is embarked in shared work. Uh, then, first is to get, basically get their name, then count. So, there are 15 women that are over age 50 that embarked in Sherboy. If you want to check their names, you can actually remove the count here. So, these are the 15 people. Uh, let me Mr. Ramon. Ah, okay. I'm so sorry. So, I forgot part, which is the uh, call this again. Gender. Gender. Plus F. So now you have three filters. Try to check that. Down. So you only have six women over age 50 uh, that embark in Sherboard. And the names, if you want to check, are there. Miss Elizabeth, Miss Elise, Miss and so on. Now, another question. How many married women are in the ship? So, get the column first, muna. Then check if, uh, if their names has the uh, string misses. So, the basic idea, if my misses sa pangalan, kasal na yun. Uh, if wala, hindi pa siya kasal. So, that's the first. Uh, filter, then use this, the first, uh, the first, what, uh, the two, then count. So you have 129 married women in the ship. And I think again, if you want to check it, you can remove the count uh, function again. Then another question, how much money was collected from the passengers in total? So the fare. So make a uh, column din dito kung magkano binayad nila. So we basically just get the sum of that. Then there's 28,694.67 uh, US, do uh, US dollars collected from the ship. Then uh, last question, what is the average fare for each class? So you can actually do this manually, uh, one, two, three. But for our case, uh, again, since we already learned the for function last time, you can use the, uh, the for loop. So there. So class one average I eighty four point fifteen US dollars in Then class two twenty point sixty six. Then class three thirteen point sixty seven. So I think final exercise for today. Uh, let's answer each together. So I'll give you around four minutes for each. Is that okay? Or three minutes. So the first question: What is the percentage of men and women who survive? Uh, the ship a sinking. So there's a column here that survived. So yes. Again, if you have questions, just ask. I hope everyone understands. I'll play music again.
Wait, is the percentage of men survive with respect to total men? A total men po pala. Oh, sorry. And then, uh, I forgot to clarify that. So, the percentage of men with respect to total men, all men, that survive. Wala na mag-a-answer about the others. Medyo nakakalito ba yung pandas? Yeah, feel ko hindi enough yung one hour of four nampayan pandas. It's for surface level. Uh, okay, it's 6.54. Or are others still answering na gusto mabol? Okay, sige. So let's try to check the. So first, uh, okay. Let's try this case, Sir Herbie. Tama po ba? Ah, uh, okay. So. Okay, let's check. Survive, yes. Then uh, gender, male. And you know, yun gender. Then count. Uh, okay, men, gender. Okay, so kitang kita natin na parang there's a uh, big sig. Uh, difference in the survival rate of the uh, women and men in the ship. So there, from this part, we know that there are the survival rate or the number of women who survive uh, are 74%. Then the number of men, 18.89%. Even though we knew a while ago that there are more women than women. Then uh, next, uh, check, check naman natin. What is the mean and median age of people who did and did not survive? So, mas bata ba yung mga nag-survive? Mas matanda ba yung mga nag-survive? So, ano yung makikita natin from this part? So, again, 3 minutes until 6.59. Hope that's enough time. I can just private message it to me if na hiya pa kayo. And uh, I think while answering, uh, if may, may nakakalitong part, you can let me know now. Because I'm check the part. Oh, okay.
okay wait uh so yun len po dun sa first question kino kino ko po niya yung total ah uh, total number pwede rin po yung dot count pwede rin yun den para sa na kwa yun yung total number uh, of rows basically rows total number of rows inside uh in the filtered data frame so just like we oh, what we knew a while ago uh 577 men so ito lang yun basically 577 let's try to check yeah yun lang po siya kinukuha lang po yung total yeah ano po length po siya basically for lists po kinukuha niya kung ilan yun nasa loob ng list then for strings, kinukuha niya kung gano'ng haba yung string kung ilang characters. And for the, for data frame naman po, kinukuha niya kung ilang rows ang meron. Uh, uh, okay, it's 7 na pala. So let's try. I think there are a lot of easy ways to do this. Uh, let's do this. Let's use this. So there, yung mean age ng, tama ba to? Okay, so interesting. Walang ano, wala masyadong difference. Hindi nagkakalay yung mga age. Uh, and I think, hindi pa natin makikita kasi baka medyo balance eh, yung number of uh, seniors saka yung number of kids na ligtas. Uh, and I think as it might challenge yourself, you must challenging part to really see if there's a difference kung sino man nakaligtas. Kung anong age group yung man nakaligtas talaga. Then our last uh, exercise for today, uh, what is the survival rate for each class? Uh, which class has the highest uh, survival rate? So, pag mas taas mo yung class mo, pag mas mahal ba yung binayad mo, mas taas yung chance mo mabuhay. O pare-paresa naman each class. May difference ba? So again, I think I'll give until 7.05 for this one.
Kate705. Uh, nice, we already got a lot of answers. Uh, okay. Let's try a different one. So let's use this, okay, uh, Sir Herbie. So again, your first filter, filter class one. Uh, then survive, yes, again, because again, we want to check the number of people who survive. Then length, that's a good part. Then uh, on the other side, divided by then class one. So the total, of num uh, total number of people in the first class. 10 times 100. So again, then just change the class for the other parts. I think I'll use the next one. Okay, so may significant difference. Kung sa taas yung class mo, mas malaki yung chance na makakaligtas ka. Ikaw yung priority. So there's a 62.96% uh, and 62.96% yung survival rate for class 1. Then uh, there's a 47.28% uh, survival rate for class 2. Then a very low survival rate for class 3. So this is our EDA, our very basic EDA. Wala pang machine learning. But uh, from this case, we already know that uh, the group of people that has the most chance of uh, survival ay yung mga females na nasa class 1. Sila yung pinakamataas. And I think uh, as an extra challenge, you can explore the data set, data set more. Now, we're not, we're not gonna check this here. Um, but later, if you still want to practice your panda skills, you can just look back on the other parts that we discussed. Then check uh, which age group has the highest survival rate. Uh, not necessarily uh, the mean of the age, but age group. For example, uh, is it 1 to 5, 5 to 10? Or you can set your own age group, uh, whatever you want. Then for the second part, is there a higher rate, a higher survival rate for the married woman? Uh, compared to like single women. Then uh, lastly, who are the oldest and youngest survivors? So, shift. so the names, because it's very interesting to know if uh, the oldest and youngest ones. So that's basically EDA. And uh, thank you for today. I am ready to accept questions for the I'll go back to my PowerPoint. No, wait. So, again, thank you. Uh, I think before, before everyone leaves, we can have a uh, picture taking. So, I encourage everyone to open their cams. about the others. I'll stop sharing screen. Ako na lang picture. Okay. Okay. Hi everyone. Ayan. So, take the first page. Okay. One, two, three. Smile. Wait lang. Second page. Okay, one, two, three, smile. And the third. Three pages pala. Uh oh, madami. Okay. So, do you guys have any questions pa? So, Jeff could, an could answer. Wala na questions. Or, medyo kung di pa kaya kung kulang pa yung practice ng pandas. Hmm. Siguro, I'll share na lang din, siguro muna. Sige. So, yeah, I've been asked by someone and others then on how to access the recording. So, um, here's how you can access the recording uh, recording of the session. So, go to courses.escolabs.com, then go to modules, then scroll down to the learning circles. And then um, go to the page of each session that you want to um, 
to see the discussion on. So I'll walk you through it. So and here's the interface of uh, how to log in. So before you can log in to courses.esqualabs.com, make sure to log in, I mean to sign up in uh, our website at um, the Aran Aral page. And then um, once you are in course, the courses that Square Labs, um, go to modules, and then in modules you will you to scroll down and see um, the part where there is indicated learning circles, and then um, you will see the discussion and the recordings on. So here's an example of the basic Python uh, recording session. So again, uh, just scroll down, and then you'll see the um, recorded session and the Jupyter notebooks. So uh, later, I'll upload data, I, I'll upload EDA, yung recording natin, and an exclusive of uh, data wrangling na tinuro ni Bash. Um, uh, our head instructor uh, taught data wrangling in Shopee. So it's, uh, it's, parang it's part of the Shopee uh, training, it's part of the Shopee training ano, um, that we made last July-ish, so yeah. I'll add that also as well. So you can also discuss, you can see, um, explore the data ranking because we don't have a lot of time and data ranking really takes a lot of time. So ayan, um, last week I've said then uh, we are going to launch a Aral Aral Plus. So here's a sneak peek of Aral Aral Plus. So it's um, just the same topic uh, with Aral Aral. So it has 14... Uh, code along Jupyter notebooks and 70 walkthrough videos. It's an on-demand, it's self-paced, so just the same. And then um, nothing you nothing needs to be downloaded. So here you will um, see the codes um, in the platform itself. Na. So no need to download Anaconda or um, Jupyter para, uh, to access the code. So it's all in the platform. Na. So here's a sneak peek. So, um, ayan, at the left side, at the right, top right side, you will see the uh, you will see someone who's going to guide you through the, the process. And below it, it's the um, it's the topics that will be discussed. So ayan. Um, and then the whole Jupiter um, lab is the whole Jupiter notebook is in the uh, main ayan, nasa gitna. It's at the center. So you will access you can access it if. You can access the Aral Aral Plus um, sometime soon because we're still fo fixing some um, bugs in the system before we actually launch it. So here, here's the uh, an example. So ayun, if you guys um, are interested in the data science bootcamp, here's the process. So first is um, you complete the pre-course. So it's um, optional naman. So if you are quite familiar with the um, if you have data skills already, like you are very proficient in Python and stats, so um, you can skip the Aral Aral and go directly to the uh, assessments. So for those who aren't, so those who want to review uh, Python and stats, you can take the Aral Aral pre-course and then attend the learning circle sessions so that you can practice your skills and then take the entrance assessment. So the assessment will uh, contain critical thinking, stats, and Python so that it's, uh, no, um, um, this, it's going to test the skills, uh, your skills um, as a data scientist. And then if you received high score or uh, yeah, received a passing in the assessment, you will then be admitted. Um, someone from SQL Labs team will contact you in terms of admission and um, will talk to you more about your goals as a data scientist. So that's the process if you're interested. And um, so kanina umaga, um, I mean tanghali, we had an AMA session with Caleb. Um, Caleb is our CTO and then um, next week, October 31, lunch time, after lunch rather, we will have another session with Julia. So if you have any questions then on like the data science as an industry as a whole or maybe um, how to like become a data scientist, something mga ganun. Um, you can ask Julia next week on October 31 at 1, 12 to 1 p.m. So stay tuned in our Facebook page. So it's going to be live naman. So yeah, um, thank you guys for attending today's session. So I hope everyone has learned a lot because data wrangling, I mean, EDA and EDA, NumPy and Pandas are really hard topics. Or they are considered as intermediate uh, Python. They are parang beyond um, the basics na. So we really need the, the 
qual quantity of practice in Python and the quality of understanding and stats to become a good data scientist. So that's my advice, I guess. And then um, next session, uh, we will have data visualization. So today we discussed EDA. Uh, EDA is like analyzing data. Um, next week we will uh, discuss data viz on, it's more of communicating your insights to your audiences. So don't forget to register at bit.ly slash October LC4. And then um, answer the feedback forms for today so that we can Im improve for further sessions. So Jeff and I will stay here for a bit to, um, to uh, entertain you guys with your questions. So if you have any questions, um, you can ask them through the chat or you can unmute so that we could also, yeah, we could also talk more about it. So it might be around five minutes we can um, talk about it, your questions. So again, again, thank you. I hope you will have a great evening. I need picture not then. So I hope you you will um, have a great evening and then great dinner then. Um, someone asked, could you provide yeah. the link on courses that for today in the previous session? It's in the ano uh, um, platform now. So courses that SQL Labs. Ito siguro yung sign up. So you can sign up here. Ayan. So ito yung sign up process. So bit.ly slash ara and then you go to courses.sqlabs. So I'll stop the sharing so that it, this doesn't uh, no, make it into the recording. <laughs>